The global car industry has been suffering for a while. This isn't Detroit. We're not discussing the offshoring of jobs that has destroyed once booming cities like Detroit. This is simple economic fundamentals. Then the data goes one step deeper. How are people buying cars today? With cash? Of course not. The debt which has been amassed is accumulating to a level which has never been seen and will be impossible to pay back. Not good. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to have our focus on the car industry. As I said in the introduction, we're not talking about Detroit, we're not talking about NAFTA and all the jobs being offshored and so on. Today what we are looking at is simple economic fundamentals. I have a lot of information to cover, then I want to expand on how that is affecting other parts of the economy. Very briefly, just mention a few things. Let's begin. Germany's automotive industry slump is responsible for global economic slowdown. Now that is a very profound statement. I don't necessarily agree with that. There's a lot going on here, but I wanted to show you this article because they note what the IMF said. Germany's prized automotive industry is having a profound impact as the global economy faces its sharpest slump since the financial crisis. In the bottom paragraph, this person from the IMF had this to say, the car sector has been weighing heavily on manufacturing activity and growth. Last year, the automotive sector shrank for the first time since the global financial crisis took grip over a decade ago. Now we have noted all of the slowing fundamentals, all of the economic indicators piling up at this time and clearly we're at the slowest point beyond 2015 and 2016 into the levels we saw around the financial crisis so many different things at this point as you will note in later articles i'll show you they always say it's because of the trade issues it's because of this or that well there's so much going on today and the central banks have actually made it much much worse I've covered that on so many different videos. I know you know it. Let me show you this. Now, on one hand, you have a slowing base of consumers in this particular industry. They are less likely to buy. They're a little more hesitant. They're waiting for better deals and so on. There's a few things here. Number one, the fact that interest rates have risen in comparison to where they were a few years ago. I'm speaking specifically for car loans. Individuals have to pay a higher rate, even though historically that rate is very low because of what has happened with the Fed funds rate and of course all around the world interest rates are still historically low but in the united states over these past few years people are paying a little bit more than they were a few years ago now that just shows you that small changes in interest rates do impact the consumer quite heavily this is the motor vehicle loans owned and securitized showing you that there is nearly 1.2 trillion dollars worth now when you see the auto loan that have been amassed throughout this period. It is completely and utterly insane how far this has come. This chart here, I pulled it from 1970 up until the present. Now back in 1970, if I put my mouse over here, you're looking at $36 billion. Today, nearly $1.2 trillion. Now this is insane. This will never be paid back. If you want to know where the inflation is going, anywhere there's debt and there's leverage that happens to be the place when you see right here it was fairly large 36 billion dollars back at that time however today it has gone way way beyond that look at the student loans because so many people can finance their way through we see this maximum expansion that has taken place it's the same thing with real estate people can stretch the payments out for 30 years and as a result we see this massive unpayable debt that has been piling up. This is just one thing. And of course, that's all connected with these financial institutions. A lot of people think of this as one person. So when they think of debt, they say, well, that person is irresponsible or that group of people, they can't pay their bills. It's their problem and so on. But what they don't realize is that all of this debt is part of derivatives and these derivatives 
derivatives are owned by all of these investment agencies that one way, shape or form where you keep your money, where you keep your funds. Maybe it's your stock portfolio. Maybe it's your 401k. Maybe it's your bank account. Somehow, some way, these derivatives are hooked up to what you got going on. And that's why it's dangerous. This article here is out of Nasdaq.com. The car industry is the epicenter of the current economic slowdown. The car business is both the culprit and a victim of the biggest economic downturn since the crisis. It is not just in Germany, but it's also in Asia and Detroit. The industry uses so many raw materials and supplies from many adjacent industries that the contraction in the auto sector is dragging the whole global economy down with it. Think about what that means. We are looking at all these statistics that have piled up that I've been showing you here and now we are seeing one particular industry actually highlighting all of that. So I am glad that I found this, put this video together because it is really telling. The chief executive of Volkswagen said, this trade issue is really influencing the mood of the customers and it has the chance to really disrupt the world economy. Because of the trade issue, the car market in China is basically in a recession. That's scary for us. Now, now, these companies here employ a lot of people. They are paid reasonably well. Manufacturing in general, it's not like retail. They're actually paid a middle class salary. Now, that gives people the opportunity to go out there and buy expensive things to save some money and buy a house, to buy a car, to spend their money in the way that they feel is beneficial to them, whatever they want to do. That gets the economy going. That keeps it going. It's unbelievable what that's where we are today. Take a look at these charts here. Vehicle demand is in decline. Annual percentage change in global passenger vehicle sales and registrations. Clearly, we've had a problem since the beginning of 2017. It's been sliding down ever since. And this goes along with so many of the other factors that I've been showing you here. Clearly, there's a problem. Over these last couple years, central banks have had to act very differently than they did just a few years prior. They're not going to admit it. They're never going to say what's actually going on. Those who are well connected in the industry are keeping their mouth shut. But if you look at some of these simple things, it's going to give you an idea of what's really going on. The automobile sector is also a major consumer of commodities. And I think that's really important because if you start tracing these different commodities and look who's buying, who's selling, is there a slowdown? Is there a pickup? It gives you an idea of the industries that are connected with it. Contributions to global vehicle industry production, percentage of overall production. On the top of the list, we have services, then metals, other manufacturing, electronics, and so on. Car industry slump reflects drop in demand from China. I've shown you many charts, in fact, dealing with what's going on in China, specifically with their car market. You have to think about this. China is a major consumer. I mean, we're talking about the most cars, the most cell phones, basically the most everything in so many cases. So when you see a decline there, it's huge. It's massive. That has an impact on all these different countries that are exporting their commodities to China. Maybe they're exporting their products to China. If China's not buying, that's hurting a lot of different countries. The dark blue area is China. So you can see this from 2013 up until the 2018 numbers. Clearly a big, big change from 2016 into 2018 following what we just saw on the other charts as well. And that brings me to this point here. I posted this related to the trade issue on the community or blog section of my channel. And I just wanted to bring it up because it connects us in to what we're talking about. Okay. We have a problem going on right now. The trade issues, they continue to heat up. They continue to expand. We are being told a thousand times that this trade deal is so close. It's almost there. Don't worry. And the market prices that in and then the next day the market prices it in again it's just constantly repricing in something that has not happened at all if anything the tensions are worse the problems are worse today than they were one year ago things aren't looking good yet the market is acting in a way that says it will eventually be sorted out we don't need to worry about it none of that concern is priced in whatsoever it's priced to perfection that's a big problem so anyway in this article here basically suggesting that 
that the Chinese side isn't ready to deal. It's too soon. Now they're going to push this out as long as they can. They are just waiting, biding their time. I don't know if anything's going to be signed, but I'll tell you right now, the full deal, the one that we've been told so many times before, that that's just a matter of time. We're going to sign the deal. Okay, no, it's delayed. 90 day hard line. Okay, fine. It's going to be one week from now. All right, let's just delay it. No rush. Don't worry about it. Clearly, there is no rush because we've been hearing the same garbage all throughout and it is at this point not a joke it's not funny this is stupid now because of what's happening here in the United States with the trade issues I've noted just recently actually that 40% of the farms in the United States are living off of the bailout money that they've been given and insurance now we've got the trade issues obviously but on top of that we've had serious weather problems that have affected a lot of these farmers as a result we see the bankruptcies that have risen now new figures from the American Farm Bureau Federation are also sparking concern. From October 2018 to September 2019, Chapter 12 farm bankruptcies rose 24% from the year prior and reached the highest level since 2011. Farm debt will rise to $416 billion by the end of 2019. That's not good at all. What they're trying to do here is never going to work. It's never going to be fixed. We've got some serious, serious problems that is going on. Trying to fix this by bailing it out isn't going to work. This is a deeply rooted issue that unfortunately is looking like it's going to get worse before it gets any better. Now, a couple things I wanted to touch on. This one here, the productivity of American workers fell in the third quarter for the first time in almost four years, reflecting a cutback in production as the U.S. economy slowed toward the end of the summer. So we've been told specifically that the economy is doing fantastic. We have seen the GDP growth at 1.9%, and we know that's manipulated. Even that is slowing down somewhat. But don't worry, because consumer confidence is high. Well, anyway... Productivity declined at a 0.3% annual rate from July to September, according to the government's own numbers. At the bottom of the page, businesses reduced production in response to softer demand, especially for exports, and they blame what's going on in the trade issues between the US and China, of course. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, where are you going? Have you hit the like button? I do appreciate it if you would hit that on the way out. Thank you very much. If you want to build a business or learn about passive income, this course was created for my subscribers specifically. It's the Amazon GPS. It's becoming one of the biggest courses on Amazon on the internet and I made it free, 100% free and I continuously add videos when I have time so it will continue to get better and better and better is at the amazongps.com. If you want to learn about the financial system, if you want to understand financial education that clearly we weren't taught in school, these two books have everything you need. All the details are at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook instead, that's available at themoneygps.com. Hang on a second, don't go anywhere because this video here is so important and I really want you to watch it. If you haven't already, click on it and I will see you there.